Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you. Now we are in 2022, praise God. Now can we call for that daily bread before we go into today's broadcast? Are you ready? Say this if you say, Father, I receive today my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Spirit of the living God, we submit our hearts to you right now. That we will be taught and walk in your truth. Jesus said you will guide us into all truth. So Lord, today we expect nothing less but this to happen in our lives. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We believe you are with us right now. In Jesus' name, I declare every body lifted every yoke destroyed right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Now, yesterday, I began sharing with you on the things God wants you to know and or to do this year. I told you yesterday, the Lord demands accuracy from us this year. He demands accuracy. And I began to share with you thoughts about faith and how to please God. God doesn't want to tolerate you. I said that yesterday, I'm saying it today. God doesn't want to tolerate you this year. He wants to be pleased with you. And without faith, there is no other way to please God. So I was sharing with you yesterday what blocks people from hearing the voice of God because faith comes by hearing and hearing the voice of God. Faith doesn't come by reading. Sometimes people read the Bible and they begin to declare what they read. Now, it's a good practice, but don't mix. Don't think that is what you're doing is declaring faith. You're not declaring faith. But you see, when you start reading the scriptures and talking the scriptures, soon it will come into your heart. Now, it is that coming into your heart, you will hear the voice of God. You see, now that is when faith starts. So you find people say, I've been declaring this thing for like maybe two months now. I've not seen any change yet. You've not seen any change because faith hasn't come. Yeah, taking the scriptures and declaring them will not produce, will, will not, that it in itself, it's not faith. Faith only starts when the voice of God comes to you. And so yesterday I was telling you how people are restricted from hearing the voice of God. Not because God is not speaking, but they have filled their minds with idols. That's I was going to read a scripture to you yesterday, Deuteronomy chapter 4. Let me show you this now. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Now, um, let me find a very good place to, to start from. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Let me just read you know, from verse 7. Now, Moses was speaking to the children of Israel from verse 7. And he says, For what great nation is there that has God so near to it? Wonderful. Right. As the Lord our God is to us, for whatever reason we may call upon him. And what great nation is there that has such st um, statutes? and righteous judgment as are in all this law, which I said before you this day. Moses was talking to them. Only take heed to yourself and diligently keep yourself, lest you forget the things your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. And teach them to your children and your grandchildren. Note that. Teach them to your children and your grandchildren. Ah, this, this can open up another teaching. <laughs> Praise God. But then, follow, follow. There's somewhere I'm going to. Then he says, especially. He says, the things you've learned, the things you've heard, teach them to your children and your grandchildren. Then he said, especially consigning the day you stood before the Lord your God in Horeb. When the Lord said to me, gather the people to me and I will let them hear my words. Oh, Did you see that? He said, gather the children to me and I will what? 
I will cause them. I will let them to hear my words that they may learn to fear me all the days they live on the earth and that they may teach their children. God says, I want to speak to them directly. And this was what we call the Old Testament. In, even in the Old Testament. That's why I, say, I tell people like, you know, all those things, this Old Testament and New Testament, they, 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 they are used to confuse people. It is one journey with the Lord. The desire of God in the Old Testament, like they say, is still the same desire of God in the New Testament. So you find in the Old Testament, God wanted to speak to them directly. Now watch this now. Let's not get, let's not deviate from our focus. It says, gather the people and let me, and let them hear my words. Sorry, and I will let them hear my words that they may learn to fear me all the days of all the days they live on the earth and that they may teach their children. Then, watch verse 11 now, Deuteronomy chapter 4. Then you came near and stood at the foot of the mountain and the mountain burned with fire to the midst of heaven with darkness, cloud and thick darkness. And the Lord spoke to you out of the midst of the fire. Watch this now. You heard the sound of the words, but you saw no form. Follow me. Hear the instruction Moses is giving to them. He said, you heard the sound of the words, but you saw no form. You only heard a voice. So he declared to you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, the Ten Commandments, and he wrote them on two tablets of stone. And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgment that you might observe them in the land which you cross over to possess. Note, first of all, God, Moses was saying that you heard God yourself. He told you the Ten Commandments yourself. After telling you, he now wrote it on tablets. Why did he write it on tablets? So that two reasons. It will be in their hearts, first of all. That's why he told them. Then when they see it, they will call to remembrance what is in their hearts. Now look at verse 16. It says, take heed to yourself. It says, take heed. Careful heed to yourself. For you saw no form when the Lord spoke to you at Horeb out of the midst of the fire. He said, take it. You did not see any form. See how he's sounding it? You did not see any form. Verse 16. Lest you act corruptly and make for yourselves a carved image in the form of any figure. The likeness of male or female, the likeness of any animal that is on the earth, or the likeness of any winged bird that flies in the air, the likeness of anything that creeps on the ground, or the likeness of any fish that is in the water beneath the earth. And take heed, lest you lift your eyes to heaven. And when you see the sun, the moon, and the stars, and all the hosts, of heaven, you feel driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord your God have given to all the people under the whole heaven as a alemendo supro fakari andi keleki baratia koso prakia lakutu parata kali andi. Did you see what I just saw? Aliyanta. Did you see what I just saw? I read it again. Let me read it. Verse 19. Ali Gabasha. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He said, And take heed, lest you lift up your eyes to heaven. And when you see the sun, the moon, and the stars, all the hosts of heaven, you feel driven to worship them and serve 
them, which the Lord your God has given to all the people under the whole heaven as a heritage. Brothers and sisters, the heavens, the star, the moon, the sun, they are your heritage. God gave them to you as your, you are the altar. You own the stars. You own. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> Did you get that now? Thank you, Lord Jesus. What's God saying? Moses was instructing them, don't make any image. The reason is because there is no image you are going to make that will qualify to represent God. None. 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 And this is the same reason Jesus, I've told you this many times, when he rose from the dead, he never came back to the disciples in the same figure. That when he was living, for, when well, like, well, like when he was living with them before he died, when he rose from the dead, every time he showed up, he showed up in a different figure. It's a it's a good reason. It's it's calculated. It's not like oh, Jesus was just trying to scare them or just giving them element of surprise. No, sir, because now this is Jesus. The moment he rose from the dead, he was not that Jesus again that they were doing dealing with for the past three and a half years. Now, this is, the, this is Jesus in the fullness of his glory. In the fullness of his glory. And if he's going to walk in the fullness of his glory, the only way you will know him is when you recognize his voice. If you do not recognize his voice, you will never know him. Even though they sat with him and they ate with him three and a half years this time around. You, you read it in scriptures. He would show up to them and, and he showed up to Mary Magdalene and, and she didn't know he was the one until he spoke and said, Mary. And she recognized that voice. He was walking with his disciples, his own disciples on the way of uh, going to Elimas. And, and they were speaking concerning him. And he joined them and, and they began to speak and he was talking to them. They, 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 they would look at him and like, but, but they're like, I don't think he's there. Until he revealed himself by the breaking of bread. Even the day he ascended, the Bible says in Matthew 28, he called his disciples, the 11. He called the 11 to come and meet him there. The Bible says when they got there, they worshipped him, but some of them, who are some of the 11, 11 people, these were those who went in and out with him. Some of the 11 people doubted. Why? And they, they are looking, hey, is this really Jesus? The reason is very simple. He did not want them to carry any form, anything that looks like him. Brothers and sisters, the greatest distraction you have from hearing the voice of God is the image that you have put in your heart concerning Him. It is time to drop that image. It is time to drop that image. So, so what should I do? Drop it and listen for His voice. Just listen for His voice. He's always speaking. I told you yesterday, the reason you don't hear him is because you are not paying attention to his voice. Don't assume he will appear to you in some way. Don't assume he's going to speak to you in a certain way. Just allow him. Say, Lord, you know what? I want to pay attention to you. That I may hear you. And soon, you begin to hear his voice in your heart. In your heart. I'll tell you the truth, there are times you will hear his voice so loud that you may even turn around to see who's calling you. But even that, he didn't speak from the outside. He spoke from your heart. He speaks from your heart. And if you start paying attention to him, 
you begin to hear his voice. And number two, you must acknowledge him. You must acknowledge him. When you hear, you say, Lord, that's you. Thank you. I'm going to do what you say. Thank you, Lord Jesus. My time is up. Praise God. Oh, Father, let your voice come in such accuracy that your children will understand and do that which you mean and say. In Jesus' name, amen.